Bless the Lord, who forgives all our sins. Let us kneel together and say the Decalogue responsibly. Hear the commandments of God to God's people. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of bondage. You shall have no other gods but me. You shall not make for yourself any idol. You shall not invoke with malice the name of the Lord your God. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Honor your father and your mother. You shall not commit murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not be a false witness. You shall not covet anything that belongs to your neighbor. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you alone can bring into order the unruly wills and affections of sinners. Grant your people grace to love what you command and desire what you promise that among the swift and varied changes of the world, our hearts may surely there be fixed where true joys are to be found. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. first reading is from the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord who makes a way in the sea, 
a path in the mighty waters, who brings out chariot and horse, army and warrior. They lie down, they cannot rise. They are extinguished, quenched like a wick. Do not remember the former things or consider the things of old. I am about to do a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. The animals will honor me, the jackals and the ostriches, for I give water in the wilderness, rivers in the desert, to drink, to give drink to my chosen people, the people who, whom I formed for myself, so that they might declare my praise. The word of the Lord. A reading from Philippians chapter 3. If anyone else has reason to be confident in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day, a member of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew born of Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, blameless. Yet, whatever gains I had, these I have come to regard as loss because of Christ. More than that, I regard everything as loss because of the surprising value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things, and I regard them as rubbish, in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but one that comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God based on faith. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by becoming like him in his death, if somehow 
I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained this or have already reached the goal, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead. I press on towards the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, the home of Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. There they gave a dinner for him. Martha served, and Lazarus was one of those at the table with him. Mary took a pound of costly perfume made of pure nard anointed Jesus' feet and wiped them with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume, but Judas Iscariot, one of his disciples, the one who was about to betray him said, why was this perfume not sold for 300 denarii and the money given to the poor? He said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. He kept the common purse and used to steal what was put into it. Jesus said, leave her alone. She bought it so that she might keep it for the day of my burial. You always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. 
The Gospel of the Lord. name of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. So we've all heard of the Last Supper. I guess we could say this is the uh, next to Last Supper, the penultimate supper. And it's a smaller gathering, but it's a gathering that has uh, a lot of meaning uh, wrapped up in it. This is a gathering with uh, Jesus, the same three who are in this, well, two of them are there, uh, Martha, Mary, and Lazarus, the brother, who's recently been raised from the dead. And Martha, again, is serving. And uh, where's Mary? Here she's sitting at Jesus' feet, but this seems to be another occasion in Bethany. And she comes in with this pound of nard. <laughs> the uh, woman who's a priest who lives upstairs, Megan, said, are you ready to talk about nard tomorrow? And I, <laughs> I said, don't be a nerd. <laughs> I'm not going to talk about nard. Apparently, though, it's very, very expensive. And it's made from uh, the, uh, the valerian root or tree and... Uh, it, it's, um, it, it shows in some sense, uh, and it says it in the text, that it was designed to anoint Jesus at, uh, for his death. And so what we have here is kind of a, 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 an anointing before, before the event. Oh, here comes Jean. Jean, come on in. This is uh, my friend Jean, who lives across the street and joins us from time to time. We're just talking about the next to last supper. It's all right, we're going to make you preach if you keep standing there, though. Nice to have you. Have a seat. So we're talking about this this dinner that Jesus attended, and he is just uh, the, it, it's kind of juxtaposed between the raising of Lazarus from the dead, and it sounds as if it's a a thank you uh, meal, but it's also pointing towards Jesus' crucifixion. And they're anointing him with oil. And the, uh, or with this perfume, this nard perfume. And the house is filled with this fragrance. And people are uh, kind of amazed at, at how, how wonderful it is that, that Jesus is there. And then it points out the uh, pernicious presence of, of Judas Iscariot who says, why didn't we uh, sell that and, and, and give the money to the poor? And the text is quick to say, he really didn't care about the poor. He didn't have, didn't have any feeling for them at all. Actually, he used to steal from the offering plate. So we, we keep an eye on the offering plate in case anybody like that shows up again. But there, there's this sense that uh, Jesus says something that, that I think I can imagine 
preachers ever since have been trying to walk back, as they say. And that is, he said, the poor you will always have with you. Uh, but, but you only have me for a while. And I think it's impossible to, to you know, it's very complex, but it's, it's impossible to, to, to be mourning when Jesus is there. And quite frankly, because of what Jesus is about to do, in, 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 in giving himself up for, for the people, it's because of that action of identifying with the victim, identifying with the, uh, with, with the outcast, eating with the sinners, eating with the, the, the uh, rejected people of the society, that we have the motivation to minister to the poor, we have the motivation to welcome them all into the banquet feast. And this is what Jesus was constantly being criticized for. It's just unfortunate that it's so easy for us to say, well, it's more important to worship than it is to care for the poor. It's, a, it's an unfortunate juxtaposition. I'd like to just draw quickly a couple points. Um, this gospel is obviously here because within a week Jesus will be entering Jerusalem and in a week we'll be celebrating Palm Sunday, which is the entrance into Jerusalem. Within a few days after that will be the crucifixion. And, and this is a sense of anointing him while he's still alive because he won't be there to anoint afterwards. It's, they'll find an empty tomb, right? Um, in the Old Testament lesson uh, from Isaiah, God says, Behold, I make all things new. Behold, I make all things new. And in the anointing of Jesus, in the presence of Jesus, we should be sensing something new coming into our world. We should be sensing that life has overcome death that God's presence has overcome our way of managing life, which is filled with sacrifice and death and rejection and blaming of the victim and oppression and warfare. Behold, I make all things new. And so St. Paul in the reading from Philippians says, uh, I count everything in the past as, as garbage. So if we're going to think about smells for a while, we can think of the past as, as being smelling like, like, a, like an old garbage can. That somehow trying to hold on to the way that we've done things always is to be rejected. We should sense that there's something wrong with our culture. St. Paul says, I've accomplished all these things. I, I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a Jew, I'm a Pharisee, I'm educated. I've been awarded all kinds of honors, and yet I count it all as loss, all as garbage, because I am pressing forward, just as Jesus is pressing forward to Jerusalem. Behold, I make all things new. The smell that we have as we move forward is a smell of fresh life, new life, the world coming alive again. This is what we should be uh, sensing in our own lives. St. Paul says, it's not that I've made it. It's not that I claim that I have attained the presence of God or, you know, being like Jesus even. But I press forward. We in our worship, in our adoration of Jesus, are in a sense putting the past behind us and having the courage and the faith. It's not just faith that Jesus did this. It's the faith that wakes us up every morning. It's a faith that allows us to press forward to that which is new, that which is God breaking into the world, God transforming the world, God offering an invitation to the banquet feast for the poor and the oppressed, and those parts that are even rejected within ourselves. Behold, I, I make all things new. I press forward. I haven't attained it, but I'm not looking back. 
I'm moving forward. It's easy to complain about the past. It's easy to be caught up in, in our memories, in our guilt, in our, in our set way of doing things. But we, as we invite Jesus into our life, as we honor him with the perfume of new life, as we contemplate what he's doing for us in, this, in these last days of his life, and giving himself as a fresh offering, we ourselves are pressing forward. We ourselves are joining with him as he presses forward to a new world, to the kingdom of God being manifest here on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. Let us stand and confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one. <clears throat> we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all peoples, let us pray to the Lord. For our bishop and for all the clergy and people, let us pray to the Lord. For our president, for the leaders of the nations, and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. For this city of New York, for every city and community, and for those who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. For the good earth which God has given us, and for the wisdom and will to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. For the aged and infirm, for the widowed and orphans, and for the sick and the suffering, Praying especially for Christopher, Bill, Barbara, Kathy, Amy, Craig, Cole, Hyacinth, Jacinda, Christy, Jim, Joan, Sarah, Paul, Victoria, Joshua, Florence, Karen, Ted, Jacqueline, Haley, Diana, Charlie, Laura, Tim, and the Amrasa family. Also remembering uh, Chris Henderson, Joan, Robert, Marva, Wyatt, Catherine, Steve, and Peter. For those who are suffering from dread disease, for those who are refugees from their homeland and victims of warfare and random acts of violence, let us pray to the Lord. For the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, and for all those who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. For all who have died in the hope of the resurrection, and for all the departed, praying especially for Francis Valdez, Tom White, Bruce Mora, Vita Myers, Michael Flores, 
Kauris, Paul, Benjamin Parks and Robert Ray Parks and Judy, Terry, Canon Francis Rubin and Mary N. Bassiuni, Donnell, John, Bobby, Bobby Jean, Kay, Mary, Harry, and Helmut. Let us pray to the Lord for deliverance from all violence, danger, oppression, and degradation. Let us pray to the Lord that we may end our lives in faith and hope without suffering and without reproach. Let us pray to the Lord. In the communion of, of all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace be with you. We're getting closer and closer to actually shaking hands and, and being fully human again. But we're not there yet, we just, we just, we just press on. Um, I'd like to thank those who showed up for our soup kitchen yesterday. Um, we had some new volunteers and a lot of people standing outside. And again, we always feel like, um, take that serendipity. We, we, <laughs> we have a line too. Uh, not as much uh, sweets, though. But in any case, it's, it's, a, it's a nice way to spend a Saturday afternoon. And Jim comes and practices. And I, right? <laughs> you can tell he practices. And um, in any case, uh, um, we are getting close to Holy Week. It begins next Sunday uh, with Palm Sunday. And then two weeks from today is Easter Day. Um, you'll be getting newsletters about the times of the services and such. Walk in love as Christ loves us and gives himself as an offering and sacrifice to God for us.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven. <coughs> heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who was tempted in every way as we are, yet did not sin. By his grace we are able to triumph over every evil, and to live no longer for ourselves alone, but for him who died for us and rose again. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and our archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he'd given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he'd given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit, to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and now ending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to sing. gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith and with thanksgiving.
The post-communion prayer is found in your service sheets. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Grant, Almighty God, that your people may recognize their own weakness and put their whole trust in your strength so that they may rejoice forever in the protection of your loving providence through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go forth into the world, rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. <laughs>